Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials, video 135. It's on the wave model of an electron. Remember, as we look at the level of an electron, we see that they don't behave like particles, but act more like waves. And it was this wave model that allowed us to really understand what was going on at this classical level of a Bohr uh, atom. And so we realized that electrons could be here, or here, or here, but they didn't exist in the middle, and that was puzzling to scientists. Also, why is it when an electron falls down, it emits a a photon of light, this certain amount of energy, well the wave model unlocked that because we've really got a good understanding of how waves work. So if we have waves moving back and forth and back and forth, they create something called a standing wave. And so what scientists started to hypothesize is maybe the electrons, as they're moving around, are interfering with themselves. They're going so fast that they're interfering with the electrons as they come around again. And so maybe they're wrapping around and creating standing waves. And so areas out here, we could get a standing wave where the electron moving around the outside of the atom is interfering with the electron itself. And so what you get are these standing waves that build up and that's where that energy allows the electron to be there. But in between these different orbits, they don't match up perfectly. And so they have to be a, a whole integer of the wavelength, the de Broglie wavelength for the electron to exist. If it doesn't match up perfectly, then the electron annihilates itself. And so electrons can only exist in certain energy states. And so the wave model allows us to understand this at the level of standing waves. And so standing waves occur when the waves are interfering with themselves. And so the de Broglie wavelength showed us what that wavelength is, and then we could use that to calculate the momentum and even figure out what's the size of the atom itself. Another important thing it showed us is that as electrons fall to a lower energy level, that energy contained within that standing wave is released and released in the form of a photon that we can see in these spectral lines. So to really understand what's going on with these wave electrons is we could think about fundamentals and harmonics. And so when you strum a guitar, this would be the first fundamental. This would be the second fundamental, the third fundamental. So using that as a model, if we're looking at electrons, they're moving out from the center with different wavelengths as well. And so let's start with the first inner electron. What's really going on is one wavelength is wrapping around the atom itself. What would that look like if we look here at this first orbital, it's going to look like that. Now we know something about the momentum of the electron, we can calculate the de Broglie wavelength, and if we plug it into this equation, this here is just the circumference of that circle, we can figure out what's the size of the atom, and it ends up matching up with the Bohr radius that we'd measured before, 0.53 angstroms. Now what is the next level going to look like? Well we have to have two wavelengths in there. So what's that going to look like? It looks like that. And if we go to three wavelengths, we're going to have a different de Broglie wavelength. And so what are we going to get? It's going to wrap around like that. And so what's happening is the electrons are racing around, interfering with themselves. They're building up energy in that one energy level. Now what's interesting about that is as they fall back down, they release that energy in the form of a photon. How do they jump back up to a higher level? They have to absorb that photon. And that starts to explain why we see these spectral lines. And so did you learn to qualitatively link together the wave model for electrons and then the different energy states in an atom? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.